Tidonile de Richie Neke, Obasidi Elu, Chukwo Bioma, Chidi Ebere, Olisa Mwa Amara. Koza anile obola buri ihe, Iho obola kpatoraka, Tobro kwa hum mama. Ko wanile sito nozi oma anya, Mwo bia mwone, Sito uba rumbe li nebigebi, Ofo, Yagazie, Ise, All praises to Chi the Creator, The Supreme Being, Chi the Good, Chi the Merciful, Chi, Magnificent with grace. Let everywhere of our lives be light. Let all our acts be crowned with good. May the world prosper from our ministry now and forever. So let it be. Amen. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Did yes. I say, well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy Green Thank Glory. you. Happy New Year. <laughs> okay, this is our second broadcast, isn't it? Yes. For 2023. No, we did the Kwanzaa. Oh, we did the Kwanzaa yes, thing. Yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Today is the seventh. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes. it is true. Happy yes. New Year. Yes. Happy New Year. Yes. Yes. Happy New Year. Yeah. New Year. Happy 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 New Year. Every one of us is smelling new, new, new. <laughs> you don't see. <laughs> It's a new 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 Yes, it's a new 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 uh, Dewo means greetings, but you know, I like the deeper meaning of Dewo, long life to you. You can't wish anybody anything better than long life. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New uh, 2024, uh, the Gregorian calendar, and a Happy New Month of Ekuroche. Today yes. is the uh, month of Ekuroche, a feminine energy. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let me offer my own little prayer here. Uh, thank you, Chineke. Thank you, uh, Obasidielu. Thank you for this day. Because of you, I am. Last year, the old me died. Hmm? Old me died, gone and buried. And today, I exist in the present, grateful for a new opportunity that will be presented for my continued growth. I say this prayer on behalf of all of us 
We thank the ancestors because of what they have done in the past. So we now understand that our lives should be about, we know what our lives should be about, how our faith will continue to bring forth their existence so that we may live a full life of gratitude. See. In this new year, let us all pledge to open ourselves to hopeful possibilities. Leaving our past behind is part of the journey that we have to put before us. We have to leave the past and move forward. Now we must allow Chineke to follow, allow ourselves to follow Chineke through this transition from one experience to the other. What mm -hmm. we didn't get last year, it's okay. It's a new day. We will get it. Let us be so grateful for the opportunity to leave our past behind and open the doors of today and tomorrow. Ise, 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 Yagazie. Today, we are going to discuss uh, the Christian doc doctrine that women should be silent in church. Uh, uh, this is a particular, because the reason why we chose to speak about this, because people ask me these questions, you know, when I'm on TikTok, they want to know what I think about this whole notion. So I just want to talk about it today. This is the month of Ekuroche, December 17th through January 13th. So I think this is the month of feminine energy, and it is appropriate that our com conversation is focused on feminine matters, concerns, which invariably concern uh, humanity. Uh, women speaking in church or teaching in church is perhaps it's it's a very hotly debated issue, as you all know, in the church today. And many churches ban women from becoming pastors. As a result, many many, many don't practice their skills, you know, because women are good at talking, you know, but they don't because they're restricted. Now, some people say that it is important that not to see this issue as men versus women, okay? But there are women, believe it or not, who believe that women should not serve as pastors. So to that, to that end, yes, it's not necessarily a man versus woman thing because there are some women who actually believe that women, their own gender, should not be pastors that the Bible places restrictions on the ministry of women and they accept that. And then there are men who believe women can serve as pastors and that there are no restrictions on women in ministry. This is not a matter of chauvinism or discrimination. It is an issue of biblical interpretations. Now, regardless, as far as I'm concerned, of whether it is a matter of interpretation, if in any way, it undermines another human being, it becomes a problem. It doesn't matter who interprets it. If we put restrictions on a person that Chineke did not put restrictions on, it becomes a problem. Let me, let's look at the part of the scripture. There's so many parts of the scripture you can read. But the structure of 1 Tim, uh, uh, Timothy, uh, chapter 2, chapter 2 rather, uh, verses 11 to 14 makes the reason why women cannot be pastors perfectly clear. Verse 13 begins with, in, uh, in quote, for given the, in quote, cause of Paul's statement in verses 11 to 12. It says why women should not teach or have authority over men because Adam, now hear what I'm saying. This is the reason. In Timothy, okay, first Th Timothy, Adam was created first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived. That's verses 13 through 14. So God created Adam first and then created Eve to be a helper for Adam. Now, let me ask all of you a question. What does a helper do? If I'm to help you, what exactly am I helping you with? Okay. I can't talk. I've been a, you, you, uh, I, I was deceived. What is it I'm contributing to you based on the Bible? These verses. If the woman is there to help Adam, in what way? 
is she supposed to help him? The order of creation, as far as they're concerned, is Adam first. And that means a woman cannot say anything to a man because the man was created first. Then the woman is there to help him. That's not helping. I don't know in what way a person who has been deceived and who's not supposed to talk is supposed to help you. If she's supposed to bear your children, then how in the world is she not supposed to speak? How is she helping you if she's not able to speak? According to your Bible, she doesn't speak to men. Yes, she births men. She raises them, but she can't speak amongst men. These are some of the confusion that when you start making your argument to women, you have to make sense. Me, as a woman, it doesn't make sense to me. All right? The irony for me, ladies and gentlemen, is that when God created man, he created him from dirt and then created a woman from his ribs, supposedly. But when God wanted to recreate himself in human form, he chose the womb of a woman to bring him, God, forth as a child and allow the woman to teach him, God, king of kings. So if God chose a woman and the woman taught God, is man superior to God? If a woman cannot speak in church where men are gathered, but she can speak to the king of kings that she brought forth and taught him, is man superior to God? These are some of the confusions that we create when we try to explain some of these things that we put in the so-called holy book. If a woman cannot teach men or her husband or whatever, we need to rewrite the mythology because it's not making sense. I think it's very important that we pay attention to what we're believing because all of that messes with our minds. It messes with our mental health. I speak as a woman and I'm grateful that I'm a cheist because cheism doesn't teach me that. There's an Igbo proverb that cheism emphasizes. Respect begets respect. I will treat you with dignity and honor if you treat me with dignity and honor. But if you put your foot on my neck and tell me that God said, then you confuse me because your explanation doesn't even make sense, even if you package it in a holy book. So today I'm speaking to you out of respect for, uh, for uh, out of respect for you and out of respect for myself because I cannot respect you if I don't respect myself. I cannot respect you if I don't believe that you respect me. And if I don't respect myself, what's my purpose of being here? So I may speak today, ladies and gentlemen, in very uncomfortable terms. And I ask you from the bottom of my heart to allow the milk of human kindness to flow through you and treat me with respect and kindness. This is all about respect. When you put a man, I don't care if he's a black, purple, green, or otherwise, any human being that's undermined under the falsities of religion, it impacts our mental health. It Im impacts our self-respect. It impacts how we feel, how we relate to our world. Today, though, when I say what I say, and I'll hand it over to my, to, uh, to my co-hosts, Aloha ago, aburenyi. After an argument, we find understanding and become friends. It's important for you to understand why I love being a chaste. Why I ascribe to African spiritual traditions, not the diluted ones, not the ones that is uh, 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 influenced by foreign interest. The tenets of Chiism influence my faith and my mental health because it makes me whole. I speak as a woman regarding how my spirituality impacts my mental health. It, it affects my mental health in that Chiism spiritual beliefs and practices help to foster my connection, not to man, but my connection to Chineke. 
That's the emphasis in Chisholm. Chisholm does not say who is more important on a scale in relationship with Chineke. Right where I am, Chisholm tells me Chineke is. It is my responsibility, if you're a woman, to pay attention to what you're buying into and then assess how that impacts your well-being, your spiritual growth or lack thereof. My spirituality in Chisholm is founded in a deep cultural well upon which I draw my strength during times of crisis, unrest, or when I face obstacles and challenges because Chisholm tells me, you can do it. When you agree, your uh, Chineke agrees. You put out what you want. You put out and present to Chineke what you're looking for. If you believe Chineke supports you. Nowhere does he say in Chiism that this relationship is only for men. Because both hands, we, we need our men. The men need our women. And we need to practice and study things that teach us to honor each other, to respect each other so that we don't have friction. All these things is a quest to subjugate women to a lower, lower status. Now, sometimes women don't say some, don't speak up, but I'm going to tell you as a woman, I'm, there's no way, even if I'm quiet, that that sits well with my mental health. There's no way that makes me feel good. I watched a video where a young man who couldn't be more than 23 years old told a woman to be quiet because the Bible said that you have no business teaching in the presence of men. So you have nothing to offer. So be quiet. This is from a man who perhaps was breastfed by a woman, taught by a woman. Now all of a sudden, he's grown up. He's the master of the universe. And a woman cannot speak in his presence, in his universe. Chism reinforces. Now I'm speaking to sisters now. Y'all need to hear. Because there's no way in Chism that you don't have a place, that you're second fiddle. Even the feminine part of God, Chineke, is Ake, and the mas uh, masculine part of God is Chi. Both working in tangent, both working with each other. That's how we should work with each other through honor and respect and move forward as partners, doing each one of us having a role to play in the welfare of our communities, of our homes. My faith teaches me that right where I am, Chineke is. Chism reinforces inner peace and provides me a sense of connection to a force that is so much greater than me. I get that. Chineke helps me to develop coping skills and exhibit less anxiety and depression. This is what is intertwined in the philosophy of Chism. Where you are, Chineke is. You speak your mind as long as you speak the truth. Because if Chineke did not want woman to speak, she would not have given you voice. If Chineke did not want women to teach men, he would not have given us a womb to birth men. Let's keep it real. Chism teaches me that Chineke is in the midst of me every single day. I am in divine order through the divine love of Chineke and that I must fear nothing seen and unseen. This whole universe, this whole world is a bastion of goodness and I have the right to declare it as my divine be bequest. I have no reason feeling less than. As a woman, I'm reminded that I am the temple of Chineke. Thank you, Chiism. I feel empowered. I am taught that I, I am somebody. I embody all the characteristics of Chineke. Love, peace, truth, to wrap around this truth. That is what Chiism is about. We are materialization of Chineke. I can overcome any affliction, any condition in the world because Chineke's spirit is in my spirit than any spirit in the world. 
Every day I get up, I am renewed. Every day I'm up, I'm reassured. And I'm, my existence and my importance in the world is reaffirmed every single day that I have breath. I'm a noble being. I must not shut up. Nobody has the right to tell a woman to be quiet. We have the right to speak. It is our divine inheritance. And in closing, I would say in Igbo Nigerian language, we say monachiso. Again, I am one with Chineke. Having this sense of oneness and connection helps me tremendously to overcome any mental tests that I may have, that I may be facing. Chism does not limit anyone, doesn't limit men, doesn't limit women, doesn't say to a man what you can or cannot say if you're speaking the truth. Speak your truth because your truth shall set you free. It does not define any gender as weak or just a mere helper, but a partner in the forward movement of humanity. So, Chiism as a woman empowers me, empowers me to be a better person, to go beyond my humanness and venture into the unlimited world of the spirit without limitations. It allows me to speak. It allows Chineke to speak through me. It doesn't limit my ability to teach because women teach everywhere, every day. So I am going to just pass this over to my, my team and let's see how you feel about this subject matter. You did go for it. We can't hear you, Yudi. Sorry, I had to mute my microphone because, uh, you know, I had some background noise and I didn't want it to interfere with uh, your segment. Uh, this is probably one of the greatest examples of sexism, right? And yes. not just sexism, but the way this sexist, uh, 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 theology has also corrupted indigenous religions, particularly indigenous African religions, where we are now involved in what I call uh, invented traditions. Something that has never been part of your primordial core, but through the process of cross-cultural pollination, you've now developed something that is not really part of your core, and it is not something that in cross-cultural pollination, you take on things to benefit your people and things that are irrelevant, you jettison those things. But in this case, you have adopted something that has corrupted your own history, your way of life in such a negative way that it's it, it stunting your growth as a people. Mm -hmm. uh, let me kind of set some, some records straight here. And, you know, for me, this whole thing is really comical. I mean, I understand it. You understand it. Dibe Chidozia understand it. And I'm sure that the vast majority of people that listen to us understand it in terms of, you know, the intentions behind this Timothy doctrine thing, you know, who, by the way, Timothy was actually accepting women and allowing women to preach in his crusade and his travels and all that, Timothy was down with the women. It was his teacher, Paul, mm -hmm. that got upset and told him two things that he was concerned about. One was the having a woman out here teaching men while she's looking sexy, distracting them spiritually, perhaps not in the kind of conservative attire that will keep a man focused on what he's talking about. Mm. That was one of them. I mean, this is real. This is the actual reason why Timothy thing came around. I'm sure in his scholarship as a you know, lecturer in African you know, uh, 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 culture and all that stuff will attest to it, which you yourself already know. That was the main reason. Then the second reason was the idea 
that the sins of humanity was championed by Eve. Mm -hmm. That's the thinking. But here's the truth about the sins of humanity before Eve even came into play and really took the brunt of this demonization of women and the level of sexism that was designed to really get the woman to a second class citizen where God created woman as a subservient human to Adam by creating the woman from Adam's ribs. In other words, yeah. your existence as a human being is mm -hmm. because of man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. God could do, the way God just, you know, waved his hands and Adam showed up and the lion showed up and the tree showed up. He could have just waved his hand and the woman would show up too, just like Adam did. But he actually did do that. The first woman, according to most, or should I say, respected uh, 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 rabbinic literature, was Lilith, was the first woman that was created from the soil, just like Adam. They were equal. There was no, I'm the man, you're the woman. It was understood that procreation was necessary to move Chineke's agenda forward, whatever that agenda is, we're still wondering what the meaning of life is anyway. I don't think anybody has answered to that question. Why do we exist? To what end? But the reason why Lilith left the Garden of Eden and flew away was because Lilith refused to sleep with Adam. When Adam wanted, Lilith said, hell no. Excuse the expression. I'll sleep with you when I want to, but you can't make me sleep with you. God can't make me sleep with you if I don't feel like sleeping with you. Lily flew off. It was after Lily fell, Lily was now demonized, and she was accused of being responsible for killing infants. In other words, when an infant dies, Lily is the one that killed the infant. He became her modus operandi, created by man. Remember, folks, this is all mythology. None of this stuff is based on any facts that is can be tested in a test tube in the laboratory. All religions are mythology. We mythologize as a way of trying to find or answer the questions of why we exist. Why is there life? Why is there death? What is the yin and the yang? What is the meaning of life? Why are we here? How do these things function? The air that we breathe and all that stuff that we have no explanation back in those days scientifically. So we mythologized a whole lot of stuff and came up with a whole lot of explanations to make us sleep better at night, to help us uh, in a way validate our existence. Abrahamic religions are really the ones that make a distinction between a man and a woman in terms of superior and inferior entities spiritually. Buddhism doesn't do that. Hinduism doesn't say the woman is inferior to the man. Shiism definitely doesn't say that. China, aka male and female essence of the creator. One cannot exist without the other. I can't require I can't I can't require can left hand, right hand, right eye, left eye, right nostrils, dual. The dualism of your physical manifestation and then the dualism, dualism of life itself, which is your physical being and your spiritual being. Both working in concert with some level of scientific explanation. Paranormal activities, all those things. At least our evidence that you're just not here physically. There's also a spiritual side of things. I have personally experienced it. So I'm speaking out of experience. But religion is mythology. And its etymology simply means a duty that a person feels compelled to perform in reverence to something greater than oneself. And that something is the almighty creator. God, Chineke, Olodumare, Ukulunkulu, Uvuzelele. Jehovah, God in many names. 
when a human being, man or woman, recognized or realized that they were not responsible for the air that they breathed, the life-sustaining forces, the waters in the rivers, in the streams, the fish in the water, the animals that you eat, the fruits that you're eating before agriculture even became a reality. Those things that sustained you, the heavens and the earth, the rain, the cloud, when man or woman realized that they were not responsible for those things, religion became automatic in them. That is the etymology of religion. Everything else in mythology are philosophies. Influenced by geography that gives birth to culture and history. In that order, or should I say history and culture, in that order. But it starts with geography. Your location that allows you to adapt to your environment is where your religious philosophy comes from. But the idea that there's a creator is what religion is. The recognition that there's something greater than yourself and that something is the almighty God. Now, the philosophies that come after religion, the religious philosophy that have nothing to do with the creator. Like in Shinto. They don't spend time talking about God and all that stuff. They are more concerned with the environment, which is the life-sustaining forces and how to put them in the right mixture to protect it and to also use it for your benefit, for your existence. Nature in itself is a higher being, is a higher calling, is revered because without nature, you cannot exist. Without the heavens, without the sun, Without the waters, in the rivers, the animals, the land that you're standing on, you, you cannot exist. So to some religious philosophies, that is pretty much the crux of religion for them. And then some people, like in African spirituality, we ascribe to a higher being. Spirit, uh, Abrahamic religions do the same thing. But the idea that women are now bastardized and insulted and demonized because of some mythology, some philosophy of Abrahamic religion that spread all over the world simply because they had the sword. Mm -hmm. They had the ability to force your conversion, whether you like it or you don't. And through the generations, telling you the same story Next thing you know, you start to lose yourself, who you are. You start losing your history because you've been under the gun for so many decades. Yes. The children that are born are now born into the system that is oppressing them. And before you know it, you're wandering in the desert waiting for rain where you could be in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Experiencing all that waterfall and everything and rain and all that. So the idea that a woman is subservient spiritually to a man. Mm. Let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of things women can do better than men and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But there are four things that men do better than women and the woman can never do it better than a man. And it has nothing to do with your ability to create something. It's all physical. And one of them is you cannot get pregnant without a guy. It's all physical. There are some jobs that men can do. Women can't do it. I don't care how strong the woman is. You can't do it. You know why? Because you're a female. Your body ain't built for that. Period. And there's no, you, can, you can't talk about it sexism. No, it's not. There's no way the heavyweight champion of the world will get into the ring with a woman who is also a heavyweight. And you expect that woman to beat the heavyweight champion of the world. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. It's not sexism, it's reality. But creativity, science, philosopher, deviousship, oh yeah, women can do all that stuff just as good as men can do and in some situations better. But for that way of thinking to permeate, you got to jettison this idea that you only run your spiritual life based on biblical interpretations 
of theologies created by man that has nothing to do with original thought. What you see in the Bible, interpreted in so many different languages, in so many different time periods, some interpretations based on politics, we've now assimilated through cross-cultural pollination, both voluntary and involuntarily, have now decided that a woman does not have rights in spiritual matters. For me, it's totally unconscionable. And as people of African ancestry, we should steep more value to the other sex. Because without them, we are nothing on any level. I can make a baby. I can bear a baby through nine months and give birth to a baby. What makes a woman inferior to me other than the fact that she can't get in the ring with me as a fighter? That's it. That's my piece. There's some women that will whoop your behind. <laughs> yeah, but you remember I said heavyweight champion. <laughs> I'm just being funny. I'm just yeah. being funny. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's go to um, Divya Chendose. Thank you, Yudi. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so I wish to get to heavy, uh, heavyweight uh, combat, either wrestling or boxing with the there woman. There you go. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to work uh, to add on this. <laughs> but I don't know why I should get into a fight with a woman because every part of the woman has to do with fertility. Oh, so, exactly. So, exactly. Uh, I would never get into a fight with a woman. Whenever, whenever she say, I will say, yes, ma. <laughs> so, especially this month, that is the month of the female. So I will receive all the blessings of the female energy um. and then add it to my own so that I can prosper. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Well, I think um, the topic on ground, I don't know. Somehow, while I was uh, coming to the office, some thoughts just crossed my mind. And I said, well, it's uh, people and perspectives. One of the things I thought about was how come the woman's uh, periodical thing, uh, ex she experiences periodically, shall before she attains menopause, how did it come to be denigrated? And I, I said, well, if we imagine in those primeval times, depending on the mind, whether the mind was enlightened or the mind was crude, then there was no nothing like a, uh, what we call it, part. Uh -huh. And the first experience, the woman does, did not even understood her, she didn't understood her body. So the thing just dropped. And then, of course, because it's a waste, it must give some smell. A crude mind must have given that experience a very bad interpretation. Mm. Meanwhile, in some other culture, they gave it an interpretation of life. So I think uh, one experience can yield different interpretations. It all depends on how the mind uh, interprets a particular yes. experience. Yes. And that is what happens here. Uh, if I, my little knowledge of mythology, I think matriarchy is older than patriarchy. Yeah. Mm. And that, that reflects in True. the oldest uh, civilization, the Egyptian civilization, where the woman was made a deity. Uh, in fact, you witness the rising and the setting of the sun. The woman gave birth uh, to the sun in the morning and received the sun back through her mouth in the evening. And that, of course, uh, uh, came up with the myth of creation whereby the man and the woman played and the woman began to change form, her stomach began to change and they were afraid, what is it? What is this going to come? What is going to, is it that is going to come out of this? And they were wondering, they wondered and wondered until a new being came forth and it became the concept of Trinity. So the woman was put on top, the man second and the new being the Holy Ghost. When the Romans came, being a patriarchal culture, they had to remove, they had to remove the woman uh, that made the whole thing male and then gave the woman a special place as the mother of God. 
these are all human creations. Of course. So it all depends on how the, the mind that witnessed the experience and how the mind understood the experience and interpreted the experience. But once interpreted, uh, like minds, we always go with what is established. Why more enlightened, evolved mind will try to recreate. So when I look at the Bible, I find two lines of creation in the Bible. The first is Genesis 1, which is mm -hmm. the priestly tradition, heavily influenced by the Babylonian myth of creation. Mm -hmm. And in that a particular, uh, 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 towards the end of it, from Genesis uh, 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 1, 26 to 29, say, on the sixth day, God created man. Male and female, he created them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. That The myth of Lilith will go with this. Mm -hmm. they, they, that particular woman may not have been Eve, may be, may have been Lilith. And yes. if we take it that way, the second account of creation, the Bible, in fact, in the first account of creation, which is priestly, said the beginning, everything was void, water. And there was no difference between the heavens and the earth. And so in the, the Igbo word, Chukuokike, the God of the Bible did not actually bring the universe to be. He only mm -hmm. came and put order into it. Before the God of, God of the Bible came, what was there was void. Void simply means a state that is formless, a state that has no order, a primeval state of chaos. That's what it means. And so, like the book we talk about, chuku okiki. Okiki here does not mean that it, bring, it brought things into being. It means it configured things, partitioned things to be. And that's when the God of the Bible came and said, let the waters of the firmaments and the waters of the earth be separated. And there was heaven and there was earth the first day. And then began to order things to be. And order the waters of the earth, land to emerge, and the waters to have their uh, trajectories and their goddies and their uh, basins. And that brought, uh, uh, according to that, uh, configurations of the oceans, the rivers, the seas, the streams, ponds, lakes, and islands, and the contours, topography of the earth. Well, so the from Genesis, when you go to Genesis 2, from verses 1 to 11 down to 14, then you have another myth that says the beginning, everything was a desert. There was no plant, nothing. And then, of course, in the middle of the earth, and here the writer has the what you call the uh, uh, the east uh, great uh, great eastern uh, valley that stretches 480 kilometers from Palestine down to Egypt. The pasturing there was what they had in mind, and said in the middle of the earth, a mist went up to heaven, and then God caused the garden and caused four rivers to flow. Pihon, Gishon, Euphrates, and Tigris. That's, it's, it's a period of pasturing. It's common tradition with the Arabians, the Iranians, the Babylonians, Assyrians, Palestinians. It's a common tradition among them uh, there. And then uh, uh, we now see that Adam was lonely and uh, he was caused to sleep. And then a rip was taken from him, maybe this time around, so that the woman will be subservient to him. Aha. Uh -huh. So there is uh, a kind of disparagement here in the sense that the writer of the Bible seemed to create impression that ab initio, man and woman were given equal rights to God. And that may be made the woman not to be subservient to the man. I am the mm -hmm. one making the deductions. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So the one making the deductions, because that's the impression created mm -hmm. by the writer of the Bible, which is mm -hmm. not there in the 
Igbo, Chinese. African, Yoruba, African, ethnic African, typical tradition. African tradition. In the typical yes. African tradition, man and woman were created equal. But that yes. did not make the man to lord it over the woman and the woman to be to revolt or rebel against the man. And that's yes. because there was a principle. There was a principle mm -hmm. created in the African tradition. This principle runs through all the African tradition. The principle yes. of respect. Yes. Iba. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So yes. that's why, yes. yeah, that is why exactly you have said it. Yes. So, and the way the Igbo will wake up, the Igbo did that, male, female, female, male, will wake up in the morning and salute Chuko Kikabia man. Upon respect, no go kiji ko. Mary, you could judge the Igbo, Makudo. After Oshi Shimbaro, Oshi Shana Chara, who no Pura, the Kani, too, in Makogami. Ubumere. Why in the Muta Wani Bear, Potanazo? Ubumere. Yabo or for a pretty jawal. On no pretty jawal. Then the Bureau of Bar will say Iba. In fact, the Bible, you must say Iba Lafido to Ife. It is on respect that we created the city of Ife or the town of Ife. Yes. Iba Bere, respect to the woman. Iba Pony, respect to the man. Iba Iwe, respect to the children. Iba Da, respect to the elder. Respect yes. is reciprocal for everyone. Yes. So that particular injunction, respect, was there from the beginning. And that is why if you look at the creation stories of traditional Africa, it did not say that Chuko Kikabiyama solely created the universe. No. Yes. Chuko Kikabiyama created the universe through delegation of duties. Mm -hmm. the primary thing that he owns a uh, privilege to is life, Ndo. Yes, Ndo. All the other divinities who are his children, uh -huh. or his children, because it's neither male or female. Chuku is neither male or female. Mm -hmm. Rather, it has both male and female. It manifests Quality. both male and female yes. essences. But yes. it's a neutral force. Yes. Chuku is a neutral force. But it manifests both male and female in yes. manifestation, in yes. physical reality. Yes. So, it, 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 this uh, the the divinities emanated from it, and yes. they are his children, and they are both male and female, and they all respect each other, and the 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 universe is structured in respect, yes. and that's because of this factor of respect. Yes. There is what you call symbiosis. There's what you call complementarity. Yes, that is it missing in the judeo-christian arab islamic tradition that's right and uh, so the uh the, the the first story of creation also of the bible goes with the creation story in the quran mm -hmm. because in the quran there is no theory of fall mm -hmm. and however the woman is denigrated and put a second class as it is in jewish tradition a primordial Christian tradition, with the exception of Protestantism that began to revolt, and Pentecostalism brought the final revolt yes. against the standing Orthodox Christian order. Yes. So that today you find female pastors, female overseers, female spiritualists in Christianity. And then the African also come into it. When you come into the African perspective, you find uh, since we always had female. Uh, priestesses, goddesses. So you'll find that tradition is also taken, that African tradition is taken into Christianity. Today, you'll find a lot of uh, uh, Christian spiritual homes run, uh, run by women all over Africa. Yes. Now, so when I look at, to Randolph, when I look at what the, the writer of the Bible has done, what this has uh, uh, reveals is that from the beginning, the, 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 those uh, in the what I call the uh, uh, the Semitic Caucasian tradition yes. did not know how to manage reciprocity between the sexes. Yes. Opposites. There was a problem of contention. Mm -hmm. Who owns what? Who governs what? Yes. 
And that's because the factor of respect was missing. Mm -hmm. And so, and where there's no factor of respect, the question of two equal things, which one governs and which one follows? Where respect is lacking, the two will have to contest for that position. And mm -hmm. that will lead to domination and elimination. Yes. But where there's a factor of respect, it says, be yourself, I be myself. Mm -hmm. There are things you are fashioned to do naturally that I, the man, cannot do. Mm -hmm. Dibia Chad has said that. Yeah. But there are things that I, as the man, I am factored to do mm -hmm. that the female cannot do. Mm -hmm. So I cannot carry the egg. Mm -hmm. That is left for the woman to carry the egg. Mm -hmm. So the woman is carrying half of the life. Mm -hmm. I am carrying half of the life. That's right. Yep. That's right. And one of us meet that will produce a few life. That's right. So that leads to complementarity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but like Divya Charger said, because the, of these continuous inflow and unchecked inflow and continuous inflow of Judeo-Christian Arab Islamic doctrines and traditions, you find that the African today has imbibed the mentality of what I call radical patriarchy. That's right. Yes. Very radical. Patriarchy. Very the radical. African, the African no. does not practice radical patriarchy. What we practice okay. was moderated patriarchy. Yes. Moderated matriarchy in which mm -hmm. the male and the female are involved. So when the colonialists came, they did understand that. Mm -hmm. So they had to perish the feminist side of the whole talk. Mm -hmm. And today they are talking about feminism as mm -hmm. if it is new. Yes. This is why the likes of SB Uluwale, mm -hmm. when she was alive, revolted against feminism. Mm -hmm. Because you look at the person who was talking about feminism. She was a, 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 a man in female skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simone de Beauvoir, she was everything male. And mm -hmm. so she wanted the female to be uh, on her own like the man. And mm -hmm. S.B. Wale said, that's not what the African culture is all about. Mm -hmm. She is a woman. She is not a feminist. So she, she, she brought in the term womanism, African womanism. Mm -hmm. and that's what most people in this part... Uh, University of Lagos philosophy, the mm -hmm. of philosophy, that's what they promote. Only yes. very few, few of them are into uh, feminism. They rather mm -hmm. promote womanism. Mm -hmm. I play my role as a woman. Mm -hmm. And I live by the tradition of the land. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge is that like the male has kept the uh, traditional cultures mm -hmm. and institutions alive. Mm -hmm. And like uh, <coughs> Libya, uh, uh, is uh, keeping the, the tradition of the female institutions sacrosanct. Many more females and women should go and resurrect the female traditions and institutions in their culture. Yes. That is where the power of the female lies. Yes. And that's a rallying point. Yes. And once we do that, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to the level of complementarity instead of this fisticus of yes. that that sexism yes to yes That's thank you thank you so much yes. an excellent presentation yes. you know what one of the things that i recognize my father you know and 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 that's that's what i love so much about my father when i was made chief uh in my village uh there were some places now i i understand where men have to have their man cave you know, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. There are certain things that they talk about I don't even want to know about. You know, men men have things they want to talk about. They have things they want to do, and that's okay. But when I became a chief, <clears throat> there were some places that were supposedly spiritual. And some of the men that said I couldn't go in there. So my father stepped in and said, okay, let me ask you this. She's now a chief, a spiritual chief. Why can't she go in there? Because if she goes in there, then what happens to you as a male? What happens to God? What happens to our culture? 
before just because she goes in there they said well you know it's a man's place. I, said, I understand it's a man's place but i want you to explain to her the significance of her not being able to enter somewhere you say spiritual because the spirituality is not about you it's about god it's about chineke so if chineke then if that place is sacred for chineke you explain to my daughter why she can't go in there is it because chineke says no women shouldn't they couldn't explain it to me i stood there i said all right explain well you know it's the culture well i understand the culture what is the culture see now if it's a place that's dedicated just for men you know what i'm saying just like the place is dedicated to women as a matter of fact there's a crowd we have a culture where uh uh, there's a part of the stream you can when a, when a woman who's getting ready to get married is bathing you can't go through there you know you have to pay you you know you have to dance they make you do okay you know you know that one you know you know you know that one you know you can do it you know so if you're a man and you're trying to pass to go towards that river right they won't let you go there because it's a that belongs to the women at that moment anyway you see now that kind of cultural thing i get then there's a place that where men gather and they talk men stuff and all that that is okay that's perfectly okay people need their space but when you claim a spiritual space then you're talking about the creator you're not talking about you mm -hmm. it, it, it goes beyond you now so if you claim that this spiritual place that a woman cannot enter then you are claiming this is a law made by Chineke, which you can't prove. So they backed down and said, you're right. And I walked right in. And guess what? The roof didn't cave in. The place didn't catch fire. Nothing happened. So sometimes we embrace things that we embrace, not because of our culture, but because of the introduction of new information that now tells our men get our men confused that oh if you are you know if you if somehow you feel that you are bigger and better than your female then you are bigger and better and better no no you you complement each other a happy home is a home where the male and female complement each other if you try to undermine a human being it could be a female or a male it doesn't go well. Now, if you remember correctly, in our spiritual tradition, there are places, there are times when I don't know. Well, that that's also very cultural. When a male, when the males are fighting and they're arguing, all it takes is for the umada, the sisters, to walk in, and that stops the fighting. The men are not arguing anymore. They don't say, "Oh, you know." Uh, you don't have the right to come in just the fact that they recognize that the women have come in and traditionally women are important in uh conflict management once they a matter of fact they may even request that the women come because it's out of hand now they can't handle it so they ask the women to come but the thing is it doesn't make the men feel inferior this is where power lies when you are a man and you're proud of who you are and you understand who you are but you understand that your sister is here to help you in a meaningful way if something is not going well and you don't feel diminished because she comes in and asks her two cents that's manhood to me when people appreciate when a man appreciates or at least understands that he's not diminished in any way because a woman speaks up a woman has something to contribute that's manhood but a man like that young man i said earlier that told the woman to shut up i mean this kid couldn't be more than 23 and this is grown woman that he's saying be quiet because you're in this in uh, in the midst of men and you're not supposed to speak because the bible says so you you misunderstand the, you don't you don't understand your culture my brother that is not your culture african men don't act like that real authentic original african men don't act like that and i can tell you something about my brother Yudi. my brother doesn't wear his manhood on his shoulder no he doesn't he respects his wife he respects me as his sister 
sister. He respects his sisters. He just understands that something I can do better than him. There's something he can do better than me. And if we come together, we make something beautiful happen. Projects that we do together, just, just, he does his part. I do my part and boom, it just goes where it's supposed to go. But you, they are men that will not do because the Bible said, that's what I said earlier. Be careful what you are binding to because it doesn't necessarily make your world, your mental health better. It impacts your mental health negative, uh, negatively. Our culture, my brothers and sisters, for those who are listening, it is not our culture to decide be beyond what the UD said. The physical differences, if you had to fight and all that sort of thing. And and like uh, Dibia Chedo says, but I won't fight. Not today. We don't go to <laughs> I won't fight my woman. <laughs> but the bottom line here is I respect a man who respects me. I will go to bat for you. I will climb the mountain top to help you if you respect me. But if you disrespect me, I got nothing to do with you. I wouldn't help you if my your life depended on it. I don't have nothing to do with you. Let the Bible help you. Okay. <laughs> so you know, you know what I'm saying. So like I said earlier, I can't You know, that young man, if I could have talked to his parents, and he's a young African, a young African man, Kenyan man that was saying that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm telling you, if I could just reach out and touch those parents and say, how did you treat him? What did you teach this boy? He shot this grown woman down, told her, you don't speak in the, in the in where men are gathered. Eh? Did you have a mother? Did she breastfeed you? Where did you come from? You did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you jump in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you told the truth. Uh, you know, uh, Dibia Chido's here eloquently put things together. And then, of course, you know, as usual, okay, Dibia, you know, I think you have this. Uh, you see why the woman is important? You have this feminine way of putting things, right? <laughs> By the time I get to hearing it, I just want to grab a teddy bear and just start rocking it from left to right. I will hug it. I will kiss it. I will make it my own little bear. That's how I feel right now. But I just want to bring something, <laughs> you know, with a comic whatever aside. Yeah. Adam was not deceived by the devil, according to Abrahamic religion specifically Judaism, right? Uh -huh. That particular doctrine is adopted by Christianism because they needed an anchor and their anchor is Judaism. They're Abrahamic, they came from the same place. So same thing with Islam. They all believe the same thing. As we already know, the difference between Islam and Christianism is that one says that uh, uh, Jesus is uh, uh, the son of God. The other one said, no, he's a prophet. Muhammad is the last prophet. That's really where the difference lies between Islam and uh, Christianity. But the religion is basically the same thing. But Adam was the one who was not deceived. Eve was deceived and became a sinner. So my point is, in Abrahamic religions, the first sinner was a woman. Mm -hmm. Further spiritually justifying why the woman is a spiritual second-class citizen and have no authority to preach the gospel that she so wantonly spat upon. Uh -huh. God said, don't eat that apple of knowledge. Because if you eat it, your mind will open up. If you eat that apple, suddenly you will discover that okra soup or okra, you can use it to, to cook okra soup. <laughs> you will find out that by eating the apple, guess what? I can make ota, fufu, with yam. I can plant yam. I can hunt for food. I'm just not going to be a vegetarian because at that time, according to them, humans were not eating animals. There was no goat. There was no fish. You are eating fruit. Those animals in the Garden of Eden were not meant for you to eat them. 
You know why? Because you have no knowledge. You don't have knowledge to even know that you're supposed to eat. <laughs> if you eat the apple, you will gain knowledge. Without that apple, airplanes will not be possible today. <laughs> Cars will not be possible today. That hat Divya Chidozi is wearing right now will not be a possibility, including the glasses that you have on. Okay, Divya. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, cheese in life will not even be possible. The computer we're using right now, there's no knowledge in this world on any level would be a possibility if it wasn't for the woman. So why you're demonizing her for eating and being a sinner, you need to also thank her for opening her eyes and making us knowledgeable about all things, including childbirth, child rearing, including getting married, everything we know in this world and do According to the Abrahamic religion, we're doing it because the woman dared to disobey. So eat the apple, y'all. Eat the apple. Eat the apple. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> for, my, the for apple. the Christian brethren out there, the Abrahamic religious <laughs> people out there, people that are head to Judaism, Islam, and Christianism, all in the same circle. Understand this, the only way, according to the Bible, that a woman can be saved is through childbirth. And that's only possible if she continues in faith, love and holiness and propriety. Uh -huh. In other words, if you're single, I don't care what you do, you're feeling the hungry, you're running marathons, raising money, for sick people and homeless people. <laughs> Remember, it doesn't say being married. It says woman's sin can only be changed through childbearing. It doesn't say marriage. Mm -hmm. Childbearing. There's no specific instruction that you have to be married, then have a child for your sins to be forgiven for eating the apple. I'm just telling you what the Bible said here. Therefore, if you have not had a child and you go through life, I've never had a child, you will burn in hell. Are you listening to me, my Christian brethren here? I'm just letting you, it's a warning for you. According to Timothy, the only way that you can be saved is through childbearing and you don't necessarily have to be married either. Marriage is human laws. God didn't say nothing about being saved through childbearing only if you're married. He says you will be saved through childbearing. So if you go through life, I'm warning y'all, and you ain't had a baby. I'm not trying to promote baby mama drama. Now everybody's having a child if you're a Christian, just dropping babies left and right just so you could be saved according to your Christian doctrine. But I'm not telling you what's in the Bible. Because Eve ate the fruit and gave us the knowledge of all things that we're doing right now. To counteract that and save your soul as a woman, you must have a child. Because if you don't have a child, you go to hell. I just want to drop that nugget right there. Over to you, Dibia Chidos here. <laughs> before before Dibia Chidos says something, I want to I answer a question that then Dibia Chidos I want you to pick up on that, on my response to this question. Akachi asks, how does Africa, Nigeria, Igbos address its issues with the suppression of the woman? Well, Akachi, the, the problem with our people right now is that over 40% or about 40% of Nigerians are Christian and over 40% are Muslims. Only about 20% are members of traditional religion. So when you have that many members of the population adhering to the uh, 
dogmatic teachings of these religions, then what we're talking about today is difficult to shake because they bought into it and they practice it. And that is why you have in some churches, women and men can't even sit together. Women and men can eat together. That was not our tradition, but it's a, a newly adopted tradition. If majority of African people would adhere to African spiritual traditions, as we've talked about today, mutuality, mutual respect, then that kind of problem that you speak of, the suppression of women, will be less, much less than it is today. Because the philosophy that influences suppression of the woman in Africa, particularly in Igbo land. I'm sorry to say I'm Igbo, but my uh, brothers, y'all got to get out of this stuff because it's not helping you. There's an African proverb, Igbo proverb that says, Onyo to up a one-legged man cannot go into battle with a two-legged man. What do I mean by that? If you look at the rest of the world where the men and the women work together, and they are not wrapped in all of this uh, uh, mythology about who's superior, men being superior to women, all that stuff. They do much better because the women are the other foot that they need to work with and they contribute. If you look at what's going on in Rwanda, Rwanda, over 51% of people in leadership are women. That is when you have women who are nurturing, who, women who are, you know, women run households they know how these things are supposed to run so when they take it out there and they, they they're given the opportunity to practice what they know what they do on a daily basis when they put their children before greed things work better until nigeria until they are new and i'm, I'm saying Igbo man because you in, indicated Igbos here and that's been your experience as well i'm sure where men keep telling you what you can or cannot do because you're a female. This, that mindset is not a regional. It's not an African original system of thinking about interpersonal relationships. No. If you look at Ghana way back then, I don't know that they do it now. But in Ghana, when a man and a woman are walking, back then, historically, the man walks in front of the man, of the woman. He's not walking in front of the woman because he has a sense of superiority. No, he has a sense of protection. He, he knows that he is to protect the womb. The woman walking behind him is the woman who will bear forth, bring forth life. So he's protective of his woman. Then the Europeans have come and say, ah, my goodness, you know, that's sexism. No, it's not. And then, of course, he's buying, you know, he pulls away. So he stops doing that. Now he doesn't think he has to protect the womb. Now he has to be superior to the womb, to the woman. So, on, on, and, and Chia, does it, tell me if I'm wrong. I think that the problem that Africans face, majority of it, is the spiritual indoctrination that pits them against their greatest asset, they are women. Prove me wrong. Yeah, does it go ahead? Uh, in fact, you you to you hit the head on the nail. Let me reverse it. Pardon me. <laughs> but usually we say you you really hit the the, the nail on the head. Uh, uh, and uh, the the easiest uh, uh, book that will tell us that that everyone can assess and read is Things Fall Apart. When the colonialists came. The first set of people they walked on following the exactly what Dibi Ocharya has said was to capture the women. And once they captured the women, they used the women to capture the children. And of course, where the women and the children are, there the men will go. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is that capturing the women also meant capturing those whom they feel already had uh, were not firm in culture and there began the misinformation and misdeliberate miseducation 
Uh, I don't know, there's a portion of the Bible, the New Testament, that said the Son of Man had not come for peace, but to separate mother and father, and so on and so forth. I think uh, when we were still in secondary school, one of the deeper lifers, uh, preachers that came and was preaching that to us. My, unfortunately for him, my dad was at home, and my dad, in his usual style, very boisterous man. It's, it's, my dad had temper, a temper to such extent that when he's angry, whatever he laid his hand on must get destroyed. My father stormed out with his pistol. Bam! He missed the guy with whiskers. The thing chopped off his trousers. The man ran and fell and ran. And before he could shoot his I had to hold his hand. I said, Daddy, because he a boom mother. Leave us. We have educated us. And he said, Who are you to come and miseducate my student, my children? Will you pay for their school fee? Uh -huh. That's how you people brought confusion to Africa. Yes. And so that's how my father addressed it. Of recent two, uh, just about the uh, second week of December, I was there uh, cleaning the car. My daughter was uh, washing uh, because the water wasn't getting upstairs because he didn't have the force to do so. And so she was there washing uh, the ground floor there. And then I saw this boy standing by her and I asked the boy, what are you doing there? Preaching. Are you preaching to somebody who is working? You see, she's working. And what are you preaching to her? Will you just come out of that place? She says, as I said, what track? As if you drop that track, I will drop down your throat. <laughs> you are practicing psychological violence on her. Uh -huh. And I will practice physical violence on you. You have no <laughs> right. Uh <-huh. laughs> so, you see, that's what happened. So what is happening today in the African mind, male, female, and children, is confused psych. Yeah. This has become a major topic in anything African. Yes. Our culture and tradition, our ontology, were deliberately dislodged from it. Not only dislodged from it, our minds were abused against our ontology such that we will not only hate, but loathe, loathe, loathe our yeah. ontology. Yes. And began to criticize it without even knowing why certain things were made. Mm -hmm. So today, a typical African woman believes that everything about African culture is meant to suppress her. Yes. Yep. She doesn't even want to listen to like circumcision, for example. Yeah. How many of us know that most, the earliest tradition in Africa was uh, matriarchal, mm -hmm. matriarchy. Mm -hmm. And it is the female institution that is female gender in Africa that instituted Gibeahood. Yes. Gibia was started by Gibeahood, herbalism, all kinds of things were started by the yes. female. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Now, because they didn't want this knowledge to be taken outside the homestead, mm -hmm. so they passed it on to their male children, since the female children will marry and leave the home. Why, if some were wise enough to create a female culture where the female become, became the custodian of the culture, so they didn't marry out? All right. The same thing, the institution of circumcision in some part of Africa were founded by the female. The story is simple. You can do it. Uh, you as, as, as women, you know how ugly it is when a, a man's thing is uncircumcised. Very ugly looking. Apart from being very ugly looking, that thing uncircumcised will have to pierce through the female. You know how painful it is. And so they brought in the institution of circumcising the male and because of insecurity most of the time and to check, to make sure that the female has self-control, self-dignity. They also brought in circumcision of the female. Now, it is possible, like the way I think of it, that when the male took over this institution of circumcision, 
to control the female sex urge completely, decided to remove that aspect completely, that aspect of the female that makes her sexually active and sensitive. Yep. There's a female, there's a male by in that act of uh, circumcision because there's a way you circumcise a woman, you don't remove the clit completely. But I think the male factor, some males with biles in their mind mm -hmm. wanting to take full control of the of, of the woman, yeah, of the woman, brought mm -hmm. in the total removal. <clears throat> so that aspect, I think came in. So like I said, I think all of these depends on the leadership at a point in time. Their mindset will either lead to paradigm shift or lead to uh, introducing very terrible uh, norms that divide the, the, the genders. But uh, where you have those who have enlightened minds, Enlightened minds always grow beyond gender, mm -hmm. male or female. Mm -hmm. What they promote is the complementarity of the gender, not antagonism of the gender. Then it is always good to respect the female. Uh, this journey of mine started when I started studying African spirituality. Uh, initially, when I started with Western scholarship, I had this spirit, superior man as a man. But when I started my journey into African spirituality, and I had to be initiated into Gibia hood, Alpha was brought and thrown. The Alpha that came out showed that I had been rude in the past to female. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can't identify all the females I've been rude to, but at least my wife is a female. For all, as she represents those female, I have to appease the female spirit by appeasing my wife. How? I had to go to market, ask my wife what she want, what she wanted to eat. She, she said what she wanted to eat. I had to go buy those stuff, cook real agusi soup with okuroko, all the stuff that makes okuroko real uh, of agusi. I had to buy her. Uh, I had to cook it, pound it before the elders feed my wife, kneel down, knelt down and fed my wife. I beg, beg the female spirit to forgive whatever bad words I had told them. And then they started enlightening me that, look, in Africa, the male is giving the men in the afternoon to, to behave as if they are in charge. But in the night, you have to go and beg the woman. You need that and say, if we don't do that, the children will think we are playing, and the woman will draw the man and say, Ah, uh, uh, say, one dead, um, yeah, you know, they will reconcile. So that's a, you said that it is not the way it is in the Western world, uh -huh. that it is in the African world. In the daytime, men will behave as if they are all in charge. In the night, they go and kneel down before they are, I say, ah, forgive us. So if we don't do like that, the children will think we are not serious. So they will say, I, start, I understand you. And I did them. They will reconcile again. And when things are tough for the Gibia, the Gibia has to go and kneel before the mother. If the mother is not alive, kneels before the wife. So that the earth deity can bless. If we, the woman is the waterway. She is the earth and the waterways. Yep. Everything that gives us life. Us male, what we are is the sun and the sky. And air, and what is air is still the uh, uh, the sun uh, lapping on the waters, evaporating them. That creates the atmosphere. So the primary thing that suckles us and sustains us, the earth and the waterways, is they are all female. And so when you respect the woman, then uh, then you are you you are respecting life. Yes. You are living within life. Yes. You live within life. You will prosper within life. You yes. are enriched. And since then, I, I learned that once the, whatever is little resource you have, yes, don't hide it from your woman. Let your woman mm. know how. Oh, you. please. Thank how you. Please. Say that again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, say it again. Absolutely. My salary account is controlled by my wife. 
Oh and the other cat, she knows what comes in. So when she say, I say, you know why I'm keeping that? It's because of a raining day. So I will only bring out some percentage. No matter how tough it is, there are certain levels will not go below. So that that will be there. Anything you give to the mouth, the mouth will eat, the stomach will contain. If you kill a whole elephant and cook it in one pot, the mouth will finish it. The stomach will, will collect it. The anus will excrete the remaining that are waste. If you control and eat just uh, crayfish, use it to make a rice and some few tomato. If they mm -hmm. eat it with happiness, the mm -hmm. mouth will accept it, the stomach will contain it. Yes. And the endos will have very few waste yes. to, to throw out. So yes. my wife, um, she whatever she has, she will put. I have people call her fools. He said, well, the man I'm married to does not hide anything from me. Mm -hmm. yes. I know how much comes in. I am in charge of how the money is disbursed. Yes. Like when we go out to eat, when we go out to eat, I will put the money in her account. Or I give her the money. She does all the buying. And the children will ask, ah, mommy, you are the one bringing the money. Why is that? I said, shut up. All this money I spend is your daddy's money. And the children will come and ask me, I say, no, your mom is in charge. So I buy the philosophy that once you fix the women and the children, whatever few resource you have left, us men, we don't consume much now. You will be content with it. Because yes. what is the use yes. of a tree if it has no flowers? Yes. Thank Say you. it again. Thank Wonderful. You. Wonderful. You know what? So, oh, my to, to you... round off my, my section in this particular matter, remember one time we talked about this, uh, this issue of kula nuts. Yes. Can a woman broke kula nut? Can a woman not? This matter is connected. Uh, we said, well, the first man that was created if you enter the first woman, Adam, then the first tree, Kola nut. And this Kola nut, if it bears fruit, is female. If it does not bear fruit, is male. And where you find one male that does not bear fruit, you will find one million females that bear fruit. They have connection. Uh -huh. yep. That one male in the midst of one million has what he's doing. So if you break, if you break cola, if it's two cotyledon, they are both female. Yes. If it's three cotyledon, they are all yeah. male. If they are, if there is four cotyledon, they are two males, two females. If it is five, three females, one, two males. If it is seven, only two males, the rest are female. Hmm. Is nature telling us a story here? Okay. So, and then you are making prayer. Mm -hmm. And you said the female cannot touch the cola less, it cannot even see it, cannot even touch it. Uh -huh. A prayer is for that when you pray, you are sowing seed in the soil, uh -huh. in the spiritual soil, yes. for it to grow. Yes. So, how will it grow now when the female that is to grow it has not seen it, has not touched it? Has not <laughs> <left> it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I can't, I hope you're hearing this. Because so, this is the explanation. Only uh, uh, today you see male that feel that proud. Women are nothing. This uh -huh. I think is Western extremism. Uh -huh. Within Thank the you. African culture, there is exactly a mitigation of that. Because I just yeah. that's why I told you my story. I came from the Western religion, Western education, and I feel that superior man. I talked to women uh -huh. anyhow, and until I went into the African mystery system, and they said before yeah. I could march further, I had to appease the female spirit that I had talked rudely to yes. them. But even if you as much as do like this to your woman, you are you beat her. Yeah. If you as much do like this to your woman, you it means you beat her. You have to tell her sorry. So to appease the female yeah. spirit, not just my wife, the female spirit, I had to go out to the market. Ask my wife what she would uh -huh. eat, buy it, cook it the way she wanted. If she said it was not good, I would have to go and buy until she's satisfied. So if she wanted to punish me, I could cook cut times as she said she was not satisfied. And it was when I yes. finished feeding yes. her, she was satisfied. So it's okay. And then serve the elders. After eating, they now say, hey, uh, today now you can you can be a man. So that story. Yes.
think that when you are a Dibia, you can't fetch water for your wife. You cannot wash plates for your wife. You cannot do that for your wife. All it's only a lie. You. All it's only a lie. lie. Because all I have lie. a Dibia friends. Uh, yes. They fetch water for their wife. They do everything. These are practicing Dibia. They are not intellectual yes. Dibia like me. Hey, I practice Dibia to extract concepts, theories from it. They live yes. by it. Yes. They do the Ichwaja. They do yes. everything. They live by it. Yet before they leave to go to their shrine, they will uh -huh. do a fetch water, make sure everything, take the children to school. For there, they will go to the shrine. I have uh, my friend Dibias who, who do that. And every hour, every, uh, this, they will call their wife, 12 noon. They will call, uh, how are you? Uh, how are you? Hope no problem. And the woman is laughing. I'll oh, call me. Uh, we, uh, we and they are happy. That's when they are, uh, they are all good. They are, whatever is they are doing, it has more potency. Yes. So please, uh, let us go back to our African ontology, yes. where there's reciprocity of respect, symbiosis, complementarity. Let us go back there. Even the Christian book, Jeremiah 6, 16, says, when you get to the crossroad and you are confused, Look you back to the ancient past and return yes. there. Yes, so that's he return. Said, Thank he you. Said, I just want to say some real quick. Did, before you, you did before you go into that because I would like you to say uh, uh, more. Um, I just wanted to add something here that the culturally, when the men have come together and they've talked about uh, you know whatever whatever it is they have uh, they discuss, they say to each other, okay. Uh, instead of drawing conclusions, they'll say, let me go and sleep on it. I'll go and sleep on it. What that means is I got to go and talk to system. <laughs> I have to go and talk to my wife, you know, and get her opinion before they make decisions. It doesn't mean that they're diminished by that. It's just they're strengthened, okay? Because it takes two minds sometimes to draw the right conclusion. And they understood that. Our men understood it way back then. You understand what I'm saying? But now it's a totally different thing. You know, you make the decision and then you want to go tell her. And then when she's upset, you get upset. You said something about men should, if you have wealth, and my brothers out there, this is important. And thank you, Chair Josie. Uh, if you have your wealth, don't hide it from your wife. Don't hide your wealth from your wife. You cannot get her, her uh, uh, what was it, respect. You cannot get her trust when she knows that there's something you've got out there and she knows nothing about it. She, you're, she's supposed to know. She's supposed to know. Akachi said something and then you, you come in. Akachi did ask a question. Well, I think it was more of a statement. There is a new, um, I, know, I know the organization that started this and it's quite a joke, you know. Uh, it's, uh, she says uh, there's a new myth, okay, supposedly, uh, that Chineke had a wife, <laughs> all right? <laughs> no, you, you, you know, it's nonsense, but there are people preaching that. You go online, you see that. There's Igbos preaching that. So Chineke had a wife, and the wife blew up the blew up creation, so you've got the Bible saying that uh, uh, the, the eating of the apple, okay? So now you got the Igbo saying, because you know what? Because we just can't find what, ourselves. What does blue up creation mean? What, what is that? Blue up creation? I, I, don't what know. Is that? I don't know. But here's the point that I'm making. If, if, <laughs> if the Bible says it's the fault of the woman, you know, we got to make it. In our own culture, the fault of the woman. So we got to find something. So we gave Chineke a wife. And she blew up creation. She didn't listen to her husband. I don't know. I don't recall all that is entailed in this uh, foolishness. Okay. So that just balances out the Bible and makes these people feel. I don't know what it, how it makes them feel to tell that lie. By justifying it somehow in a way that the Bible has justified uh, punishment for women. It's crazy. You to go ahead. Go ahead. You know, if I tell a joke and my central character is a cat, 
and then somebody comes and tells the same joke, but the central character is an airplane. Is it not the same damn joke? Oh. It's the same that's joke. That's okay? It's the same thing. You know, these invented traditions where you have this thing that you have to validate or justify your worth mm -hmm. by someone else's standard. You that's know, right. you're telling somebody else's story, but you never really get to tell your own, or you look at your own story as inferior, or yeah. you want to compete with your oppressor uh -huh. on a spiritual level, so you invent your own tradition or spiritual culture to compete, so that some of those revenues that go into their coffers, perhaps you could be able to bring those revenues into your own coffers, not necessary to separate yourself from the nonsense that your oppressor put in your mind or your mm -hmm. psyche. It becomes a way for you to start something that you feel is going to be palatable to ignorant folks out there or people that are looking for information that deviates from Christian theology uh, or Abrahamic theology and just as a way of rebellion. Start this movement, coalesce around it, and then make something of it. It's sort of like somebody who's so tired of being a Christian as a black man. You're sick and tired of what they're lying to you about and teaching you. As a way for you to revolt against them, you go become a Muslim. As opposed to revolting against them and say, let me look for my traditional spirituality and embrace yeah. it. Because that's part of my primordial yeah. core. That's where my ancestors come from. My ancestors know Abraham. He didn't do nothing for me. I right. didn't come from him. The knowledge that I have, depending on my location, my geography, is based on those that came before me. It's just the way it is in all yes. cultures. But somehow for us, either we come up with Chineke having a wife or something like that. And then we forget the fact that Chineke in itself as an entity have male and female qualities is equal in a definition of the creator. The creator is not a man. The creator is not a woman. It's male and female because we understand that both of us cannot exist without the other. Creation in terms of human, uh, uh, human or animal creation, even those asexual animals have male and female reproductive parts contained in one vessel. There's just no way that life will continue to exist, whether you're a tree, an alligator, a bird, a human being, without male and female as equal partners in this concoction called being, both physically and spiritually. But somehow, like Abrahamic religions, you have to really get the woman to second class citizen. So you, the, 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 your biggest weapon is, is spirituality. Religious, that's what you fear most. Life after death, mm -hmm. is this the only yeah. way, once this life is mm -hmm. over with, is that it? I cease to exist? Yeah. There has to be something more. There is something yes. more because there's the paranormal and spiritual world out there. It's just difficult for you to yes. go over there and then come back smoking a cigar and saying, let me tell you what happened to me when I was speaking with the ancestors. Oh, well, by the way, I saw Dr. Nam Gazeki where he said hello. We don't have those kinds of conversations, but spiritually we know, we see, we understand through phenomena that those things exist. This thing about God has a wife, you know, not just a Christian thing, what do you call it, uh, 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 Norse mythology or, or, or pagan mythology, you know, of Odin having a wife too. It's just the same thing of trying to borrow somebody else's spiritual or religious philosophy and make it yours, in, yours invented tradition, which is a bunch of nonsense. And I'm hoping that for the young people that are looking and seeking information, that through this platform and through research, are able to decipher this common job that floats around here, trying to take advantage of people that are looking or seeking uh, 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 knowledge. Man is as important as a woman. A woman is as important as a man. We cannot do without each other. 
We just can't. There's no life without the female. There's no life without the male, whether it's contained in one vessel or whether it's separate. But the bottom line is we exist by complementing one another, both physically in terms of being able to create another human being through, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, 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 sexual you know, uh, uh, means, to be able to create another human being. That's the only way you do it. Scientifically, now you could do that in the test tube, but it still requires a sperm and an egg to do it. The sperm just can't do it alone. Neither can the egg. It's like people coming around here and telling you about separation of church and state. That stuff has never existed. And it's not about to exist now just because the United States Constitution said so. But yet here in America, the re religion controls everything. It controls politics, controls daily life, controls everything. We are complementary of one another. And any philosophy of religion that tells you otherwise not only rumples social harmony, but it's actually sinful to think that a woman is less than. Now, something I just wanted to point out uh, about the color not bit, you know, the idea that uh, the color not tree is male, you know, how pervasive that is throughout Igbo culture or any culture that uh, looks upon the kola nut as a sacred fruit, as the first tree that God created, the kola tree. Women break kola. They just don't break kola and bless the kola when they're in the public place where the male and the uh, women are gathering, maybe because of some, some order or something. But when we women are gathered amongst themselves, yes, they break cola. And I go for when they when they are with women, they break that cola. When you hear that a woman has no right to break cola, it's just because of the social order in the community where the male, the women and the men are gathered together. So maybe some road delegation and all that. My mother, who was a Dibia. When they bring the color with the men there, she's sitting there. They bring the color to her and she touches it. You know, Boro? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, Am I lying? No, not only touch it. We, she, they hand her her, her color. Her color. Before they even start breaking, they will I give her her. They know her, her, they know her one it. of them. Boro. They will give her her own special color. Women break color and bless color when women are gathered with each other. So the narrative that women don't break cola has a caveat. The general narrative is false. It is not true. Because when women are gathered, like you have all these Nigerian or Igbo organizations where they have these women organizations and all that, when those women are gathered, they can break cola. It's part of the Igbo culture. Let nobody no, tell but they you have been con no, no, at UD, they have been convinced that they can't, so they don't. They still have yeah, to bring the mail. I think it's a misunderstanding, it. and you're right. It's That's a what misunderstanding I'm saying. They don't, they don't when you talk about the know. public setting, you know, where they have this social order about men, women doing this, or even when it's public and coming together. Although we don't know how it's there, that's irrelevant. But as far as breaking cola not is concerned, women can break cola. When women are gathered in their organization and they are having their whatever it is, they bring cola, they break that cola. Whoever has the right, the eldest person there, they break that cola. And they bless the cola. And they eat the cola. So the idea that women cannot break cola, there's a caveat. Generally, it's wrong. Because that is not true. In the evil culture, it is not true. Women break cola when women are gathered with true. women. They break cola. They bless the cola. It's just about the social order and in a public form where, for whatever reason, for the social order, which has nothing to do with being inferior or being uh, superior to anybody or anything like that. Let me put it on the way. In a social gathering, a young man can come out and bless cola when there's an elder there.
Can he? He can't. No. But if you have young people gathered around, they bring their damn call and they don't care. Because they have nothing to do with, you know, but whoever is the oldest stay will still break unless they're all the same age. But whoever is the oldest in that between the age of 20 and 25, let me give that as an example. They will break color and the, the 25 year old will break it before the other person will break it. But women do break color. The reason why men, because we've been talking about the Christian stuff. So men did not fall out of grace with Chineke because of a woman. It is a sexist right. way by Abrahamic religions to really get women to second class citizen by invoking or presenting this notion that a woman was created from Adam's rib, making her subservient. Then to top it off, the woman disobeyed God by consorting with the devil. And that the, now the only way a woman can extricate herself or be forgiven for her sins is to bear a child and you don't have to be uh, pregnant to do it so if you go through life and you don't have a baby you're going to go to hell i wonder how that's going to play out with your the woman of the 21st century of any race that is christian if they share the information that i'm sharing now you know when you go to church and i'm sure you guys know it when you go to church sometimes you're directed to certain areas of the bible and that's what they teach you. Yeah. Yeah, when you do further research, you come to find out they'll be teaching you a whole lot of nonsense because you have more information. <laughs> but they also tell you, don't ask any questions. Accept what you are told. If you question the Bible, you're questioning God. God. The Bible supposedly is the word of God, but people forget to tell you that it's been interpreted from so many different languages. I think it started with an Arabic language or something. To the Greek, to the Latin, then to English. You got the King James. Now, let's not get on into who King James is, but when you read about King James now, you know King James was, uh, uh, you know the guy was homosexual. Did you know that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The same King James Bible we're reading, talking about is the word of God, who presided over a homosexual monarch. So I, I, I really implore our people to stop adopting Western definitions of how we should look at a woman's role in the society. Because the truth of the matter, as uh, Divya Chiodosia, you know, talked about is, number one, if you incur a wrath of a woman in your life, happiness flies out the window. Oh, that's, that's uh, women, And you wonder why. They, and you wonder why yeah. your wife or your girlfriend is acting a certain way. When you disrespect her. You can't. It's, it's, you it's, just it's, can't. Women, women are just, you know, you know they're, they're golden. Uh, it's been metrical uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the beginning. Uh, in a lot of cultures, the woman is extolled to a level that men can only grovel at. Really. Mm -hmm. You know, and Not so I, I just think uh, uh, as far as a woman having the ability to preach the gospel, I don't really care. As an African and a supporter of African women, uh, African woman has a right to talk about Chineke, present Chineke in the best possible light mm -hmm. that she possibly can without fear mm -hmm. of repercussion mm -hmm. or being excommunicated yes, by a body yes. of people that are determined to keep the woman subservient. Thank you. Thank you. It is, you know, um, this uh, happy Ekuroche. Remember today, this month, from the 17th of December to the 13th of January, is Ekuroche. Ekuroche is a uh, uh, spirit of the waters, okay, which is female, female energy. 
And for those of you who are women out there, first of all, let me thank Dibia Chedozie and Dibia Yudi for this wonderful presentation. Akachi says she's so proud to be cheers, and we are so proud to have a young woman like you as a cheers because yes, that is how the organization, the, the, the culture grows, the spiritual culture grows. Wherever you are, if you want to feel complete, if you want to feel important, and you are not conditioned in any way to feel inferior to anyone, then you have to become a, a cheers. It's, you know, being a cheers, we, we don't indoctrinate. We don't tell you that if you do this, you're going to go to hell and all that. No, 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 no. We encourage you to be the best that you can, because if you are the best that you are, then you're able to help your community to the best of your ability. You don't have the right. As a matter of fact, when my father said, you don't have the right to die until you've made a difference. Never live anywhere unknown. As I always say, not to be braggadocious, but to understand that you have a role to play in this world. We have a role to play, not just to have children. That's beautiful for those of us who have children. You raise them and you hope the best for them. You've contributed to the growth of society. Yes, but that's not all we're here for. We raise these children. We teach them right from infancy. We nurture them. We help them become who they are. As they get older, they have their own minds there. And that goes for you, my sisters who are out there. If you have gotten to the point you're now a woman, you're now an adult, now you have the responsibility to find out the truth about who you are. You cannot continue to walk through life as an older person, past 18, walking around and still thinking, I can't do this, I can't do this because I'm a woman. You are a woman because Chineke needed you to help build humanity. How can that make you weak? And if you say the Mona Jiso, if you say I am one with Chineke, what part of you is weak? What part of Chineke is weak? Otherwise, let's stop saying it. Let's stop saying Mona Jiso if we believe that the chi that is in us is weak. Then where's the power of God? Where's the power of Chineke? If Chineke is powerful where you are, then that means that power is with you. That's what we say. If you agree, if you want something, Chineke is right there to say, okay, let's go, let's do it. I dare say that the, you don't have an inferior chi because you're a woman. You don't have a, a K is not inferior. Chi is not inferior. And chi and a K is in you. You're the, you are, what, what is the word? You are the temple of Chineke. How in the world can you be the temple of the Most High and somehow you're weak? See, this is why I say be careful what you buy into. Because the contradiction is so much. God is all powerful, eminent, all in everything. And yet when he finds a woman, then he becomes weak. We're confusing people. But stop being confused. The truth is out there. You know who you are. You know your worth. And start expressing your worth because you, when you express your worth, when you do all that you can do, when you are all that you can be, then the society is better off. If you're not chock off, know yourself. Sisters, know who you are. Our brothers here are telling you. This, these are the original thinkers, male thinkers. I have no respect for a man who debases women. I have no respect for any man who thinks forever you can put yourself above your own mother. You can diminish your mother, your sisters, your daughters. Because who said? Because a book said, a book written by men. There are good things in the Bible, yes. But there's a whole lot of stuff in there like, my God. How can that be a holy book? If it's saying all these things that instead of building people up, it brings people down. But at some point, us women have to take responsibility for our growth or lack thereof. You cannot continue to blame people for what they're doing or saying about you when you allow it. 
at some point it becomes your problem, not theirs. They said, they said, who see the, that, what do you say? What do you say? Me porno. Payuka, open your mouth and speak. Che, 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 think. Once you hit 18, you're grown now. It's time for you to review what you've been taught. You still love mom and dad for teaching you what they taught you, but at some point, you become the researcher. You do your own research. Women are valuable to this world. I thank my brothers, Dibiache Dozi Okoro. Thank you for your words of wisdom and your kindness and your understanding of African culture. We women appreciate you. Dibia Yudi, we appreciate you for coming up here and letting us women know all those things that we are being fed. It's just a lie. When you buy into a lie and you practice a lie, you become a lie. Let's stop being lies, sisters. Let's start being that light that we're looking for. Let's shine it. Let's shine our light. Let us be grateful that you So yes, you can speak. You don't have to speak in church. You speak at home. You speak in school. You speak in so many places. So who needs uh, to be in church to speak? Just speak your truth wherever you find yourself. Chineke understands. If you know your truth, Chineke will let you know. I hear you. I hear you. There's nothing in this world dedicated strictly for men or strictly for women. We must complement each other. And I say this to my brothers out there. Don't take your wives for granted. Don't take your husbands for granted. A woman will support you, will make you a good wife if you respect her. If you, if you don't hide things from her, and the same thing goes for the woman, don't hide from your husband. This has been a wonderful program, and I'm just going to ask my co-host to just, we got just three minutes. Yudi, you got one minute. Dibi Achedouzia, you got one minute. Stick to the one minute, because that's all we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just addressing uh, one minute. Uh, uh, ended up. Yeah, uh, there are women who preach now. Okay, uh, they have their own ministries. They preach. You have, uh, 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 I think, yes. it's the Anglican priests. I think the most conservative Christian body is a Catholic church, and I do feel that sooner or later, since they are now blessing union of gays and let LGBT community, it's now a valid uh, union as far as the Catholics are concerned. I'm sure that uh, women becoming priests is not going to be far behind. But a whole lot of female uh, women are now, you know, on their own ministries in Africa, in the United States, all over the world, as far as Christianism is concerned. So it's a lost cause thinking you can hold women back because you can't do it. <clears throat> you can't. Thank you. Thank you. Dibia Chedouzi. We can't hear you. So he's muted. He's muted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to leave two things with us. Can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm okay now. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <coughs> one me. is that in the traditional African spirituality, the male represents the vertical order, while the female represents the horizontal order. The vertical order is what Dibi Ochaja referred to for. Uh, issue of uh, order, uh, 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 a hierarchy, the male is respected to allow certain functions to be performed in the public. But for balance, the female represents the horizontal uh, uh, dimension, like what Dib Okedibia talked about, the Umwada, when the male gets out of the uh, uh, hand, the, fe the female will whip them to order. So there are checks and balances that you must note. Then, food for thought in Calabari 
Chuko Kikabiyama is female, but the priest is male. Let's think about that. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am so thank you very much. Both of you guys were on fire today. Thank you. All of you who listened and joined us today, we were so grateful for you. And uh, we're going to continue our conversation next Saturday, next Sunday. And I do hope that you will join us. Thank you, Akachi. Thank you. I can't even name everybody that was here today. Thank you. Uh, we enjoyed having you uh, on the show. And on that note, we are going to end the show and say Yagazie to everyone. Yagazie. Thank you.